Good morning. Good morning. <sighs> Happy Friday. Friday. Yeah. Happy Friday. strength renewing, don't we? Well, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Oh, you're welcome to join me over here. Anyway, happy Friday, guys. God bless you. Uh, give a shout out. We had a good time last night at the New Salem mm -hmm. Association of Baptist here in Smith County. Uh, we had a good time. Uh, eating good food and playing some Christmas music for those guys and for the Lord. Had a lot of fun. We appreciate being invited to that. Tuesday night we got to play for the Gideons. I may have already mentioned that. Uh, but it is the season. It is the season. This is Friday, Daybreak Live, Friday morning. And good morning to you guys. Let me look and see if anybody's on here. Is anybody out there? Is there anybody out there? Well, that lets you know my past, doesn't it? Hey guys, praise the Lord, God's good. Hey Scotty Severe, that's good to see you on here brother. Alright, hallelujah. So, I thought we would jump right into, um, I've been talking about spiritual warfare, a lot of spiritual battles going on on Fridays. On Friday we jump out of the book, uh, not out of the book, but out of the book we're going through. Uh, for anybody that's joined, it's not usually here on Friday, and we do a little different on Friday, so uh, we talk about some end time things, maybe some stuff that's going on in the world, and there's a lot of things going on in the world, brothers and sisters. I don't know if you realize this, but I'll give you some some things you can look up, like if, on YouTube, you know, so that, uh, like if, if 
there's a channel called The Watchman. He keeps up pretty good with things going on around the world. Uh, the Watchman, Jason A. Jason A. If you type that into YouTube, every week, every few days, he takes news clips from around the world. Like, let's say, a river turned to blood in China. You know, he'll have weather happenings on there and stuff that's in the news. Hail falling, great storms that come up, earthquakes, things like that, sinkholes, uh, things that's going on with technology. Same thing with Skywatch TV. And so there, there's a lot of things out there that kind of, uh, that you can tune into on YouTube easily and find out stuff that's going on around the world. One more I'll give you, Israeli News Live, Israeli News Live. Now, he might say some things uh, that you you kind of scratch your head on, but he really keeps up with what's happened uh, militarily. Like, um, like, you may not know this, but the NATO just sent warships to the Ukraine, to the sea over right next to the Ukraine. I don't know if you know that or not. The U.S. sent a warship to, uh, let's see, it was the Far East of Russia, we sent a big warship over there. Uh, like he was saying, that's not poking the bear. That's taking a stick and beating the bear, what they're doing over in Ukraine. The Ukrainian government uh, made a deal with uh, NATO, and they're sending ships that way. Uh, there's attacks going on in Syria. A lot of these things you are not hearing on mainstream media. You, you don't hear what's going on. But there are sources out there that you can tune into that's keeping up with stuff that's happening around the world. And a lot of stuff is going on. So uh, here's another thing. Uh, this Hanukkah season on Monday, there's going to be a dedication of the altar for the third temple. Mm -hmm. A dedication to Sanhedrin. Yes, we, there's another Sanhedrin now. The Sanhedrin is uh, preparing. They have put out an invite for the 70 nations, which means for all the world to come and join them and rejoice with them and be blessed by the dedication of the third temple altar. Third temple altar. That'll happen at the end of Hanukkah. A dedication ceremony. So there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, they've got the blueprints. They've got stuff ready for the third temple. They've got, there's just a lot going on in the world. So uh, I thought we would jump into end time passages and we would start on Fridays just taking a, a passage and going through it. So today let's go through Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24. If you got your coffee ready, Matthew 24. And uh, this is a, a good place to start. We will look at lots of scriptures over the next few Fridays, if y'all want to join us on Fridays, Fear Not Friday, because God doesn't want us to fear, but we are supposed to hear the words of the Scripture and the words of God, okay? Jesus said this. He said to his disciples, I, I tell you before it come to pass, so that when it comes to pass, you will know, or you may know, that I am he. So, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You find that also in the book of Revelation. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. There's a spirit behind prophecy, okay? And when prophecy goes forth, it testifies Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is exactly who he said he was and who he is. So, with that being said, Matthew chapter 24, the disciples... Uh, they're at the Mount of Olives, and if you've ever been on the Mount of Olives, from the Mount of Olives, you look down over Jerusalem. There's there's Jerusalem. There's the walls of Jerusalem. It's a pretty amazing sight if you love the Bible. Uh, it's an amazing thing to behold. As he said, verse 3, uh, well, let's just start in 24.1. That'd be good. Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Jesus said unto them, See not all these things. Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And that, of course, is a reference to the great destruction that was headed their way. 
It was coming their way because they did not know the time of their visitation. But anyway, that's, that's, another, that's another study. Verse 3, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, so they left and went to the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately and said, Tell us, when shall these things be? What's he talking about? The throwing down okay, of all the stones, the destruction of the temple, and all the buildings around the temple. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Okay, so there's three questions here. One is, he had told them before they left, they said, look at these temples, Lord. Look at all these buildings here. And Jesus said, I'm telling you, it's all going to be destroyed, guys. It's all going to be destroyed. Then later, they came to him privately. Remember, this is privately. They came to him. They're on the Mount of Olives, and, and they said, Lord, when are these things going to happen? When are these things going to happen? What's going to be the sign of your coming when you return? What's, what's going to be the sign of that? And what's going to be the sign of the end of the world, or we would say the end of the age? The end of the world means, actually, the end of the age. When's going to be the sign of this? So he begins to tell them, verse 4, Jesus answered and said, Take heed that no man deceive you, trick you. Let, don't let anybody trick you. Be deceived is to be tricked, duped. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And there's two ways people look at this. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So people say, okay, well, which way did Jesus mean this? Is people going to come saying they're Christ? Is that going to happen? Well, that is going to happen, and that is happening. You can look it up on the internet right now. There are people in different parts of the world that say they're the Messiah. There's guys in different places. They have followings. They have communities. And yes, one of them, some of them say that they are Jesus, the same Jesus in your Bible, okay? And they're over in a place with a community. I remember listening to one. I, I listened to an interview with one of the guys. He said he was Jesus. And uh, he said he, he remembered some things. He didn't remember other things, but he remembered some of the things. His wife is named Mary Magdalene. And he believes he's Jesus come back, okay? So yes, there are people in the world that are saying they are Christ and deceiving people. I mean, they're saying they're him. It's happening. Look it up. I'm not, I'm not tricking you. More than you would ever think, I'm sure. But, and there's another way of looking at this. Many shall come in my name, in the name of the Lord, saying, I am Christ. Jesus saying to his disciples, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. There's going to be false prophets also. There's going to be people claiming Jesus is the Messiah, and they're going to deceive people. Mm -hmm. If you remember last Friday, I took you to a passage in the 10th chapter of 2 Corinthians where the Apostle Paul taught us that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. And he reveals to us that his ministers, other fallen angels, transform themselves. In other words, they take on a, a different uh, look, a different character, and they transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, ministers of that that is right. And Paul says, here's how you know. Here's how you know the difference. Look at their works. Look at what comes out of their mouth. Look at what they say, okay? Remember, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 to watch their fruit. See what kind of fruit comes out. And then you will know if they're true or they're sincere. There's a lot of wolves that put on sheep's clothing. So as we look out in the world, as you look at me, as I look at you, as we look at people around the world, not everybody that claims Jesus is the Messiah, not everybody that says that means that. And not everybody that says that is saying that for a good purpose. You must understand that the Bible teaches emphatically that Satan plants people in the church. In the church houses, in the book of Revelations, one of the letters to the church says that he knew where Satan's seat was. In the church. Satan's in the church? Yes. 
Yes, in the local churches, there are people that are planted by the enemy as well. That's why it's an important thing for our eyes to be open. We are to love everybody. Remember that. We even love our enemies. But we're not to be deceived. We're not to be duped. We're not to be tricked. Look for fruit. Look for true, real fruit. And I, and here's, this is important, not fake fruit, okay? I can, I preached a sermon one time, and this is different, me teaching like this, a little different sermons, but I preached a sermon one time on fake fruit. And I went and bought a bunch of plastic fruit and real fruit. And they all looked alike. And from the pulpit, the congregation looking at the pulpit, there's no way they could tell the difference from a distance looking at it. There's no way. You'd have to get up close to it. You'd have to peel back the outside to see if it's real or if it's fake. Does that make sense? You have to try to bite into it. <laughs> Once you get it in your hand, the fake fruit, you realize it. Okay? But to say this, there are fake trees that produce fake fruit, and it looks just like the real fruit. It looks like it. You've got to look close. We've got to look close. Jesus told us, not Scott. Jesus said, watch the fruit. Examine the fruit so that you can tell if it's a sheep or if it's actually a wolf that's put on a sheep's clothing. Okay? Matthew 7, by the way, not 5. Matthew 7, my daughter said, not 5. Okay, it is, that's right. She is right. Matthew 7, okay, so, verse 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. There's going to be wars. Why is there going to be wars? Wars are always going to be. Sometimes people are looking, the whole thrust of the new world order is for man to bring about a utopia. That's what everybody wants to do. But to bring that about, some people's got to be put out. Everybody's got to agree to a certain code. And that's why I've told you, the New World Order will not rise to power without a world religion, without all the religions coming together, at least in some form. The beast can't rise without the whore on its back. But... There comes a time when the beast is going to turn on the whore. That's Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 17, chapter 18. That's going to happen. Mm -hmm. The beast only needs the whore to come into power. Once it comes into power, the book of Thessalonians says, he will exalt himself above all that is called God and all that is worshipped so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God claiming himself to be God. So that's a very, very important thing. But until that comes, there's going to be wars. There's going to be rumors of wars. It's going to happen, okay? Don't get troubled. And then he says in verse 7, he's going to tell us a little more. He says, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in divers places. Okay? Okay? And then he says, all these are the beginnings of sorrows. Now, here's the way I've always seen this in the last little minute. Jesus likens this to a pregnant woman, okay? And he, he likens this to a woman who is with child. And so, as my wife has borne us children... There were times where, you know, there was the Braxton Hicks contractions, they called it. She wasn't really going into labor, but we thought she was, okay? But you could tell, we could tell, we didn't know the day and we didn't know the hour, okay? Mm -hmm. But we knew it was getting close. And how we get uh, to know? Because we could tell. There was, there was going to be a frequency, and then the contractions started, okay? And then when the contractions got to two minutes apart, okay, now we know it's time. So it became to be more frequent, stronger. I believe Jesus gave this as a picture of what to look for. So there's earthquakes, there's pestilences, there's 
and they're in different places in the world. There's uh, a lot of stuff going on. There's wars and rumors of wars, but it's going to increase and increase and increase and increase and increase. And it's going to get stronger. Earthquakes are going to get stronger. Hurricanes are going to get stronger. Signs in the heavens are going to get stronger. All right, so praise the Lord. That is Fear Not Friday. Jesus is coming back. I don't know the day or the hour. But I believe with everything in me, we are living in the last days. The Bible actually, actually tells us that we are. We've been in the last days for a long time. Jesus says, look for the signs of his coming, and we're going to keep talking about these on Friday. If a lot of you want to have more than just Friday, I might give two days to these types of scriptures because there's a lot of them. So we might give two days a week to it. If y'all want to, type in if that's something... Uh, that you think you would really like to, to uh, listen to. Because I do daybreak so that we could just minister, be together here, and so that you could be uh, hearing some things, learning some things from the Lord. Leave a comment. I love you guys. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for sharing these videos. Thank you for everything you do. Serve the Lord today, and may God bless you. Let me pray over you on this Friday and for this weekend. You know, I hope you've got a church you're going to. Go and assemble with Christians somewhere. Listen to the Word of God. Sing praises to Jesus, okay? Sing praises to the Lord who saved you and me from all our sins. And even when we were the prodigals and ran away, when we turned and come home, He was there, wrapped His loving arms around us and said, Welcome home. Thank God for that. Praise Him this weekend, okay? So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Give you shalom. In the holy name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. All right, guys. I will see you, Lord willing, Monday morning. Bye-bye.